All right, let's talk about variables and values. First of all, here we have a basic C++ program, and I want to use variables. But what are variables, really? Well, let's take a look at this thing right here. If we have a variable, let's say x, we can define it as an int x equals, let's say, 1. What that does is it creates a variable x, and then it assigns the value of 1. So you might have an x, which is really pointing to a location in memory. And then that location memory has the value of x. So let's think of this as a giant piece of memory. And in our giant piece of memory, we have an integer. Integers are, well, four bytes long. So let's say we take four bytes. So let's say this is four bytes right here of the memory. Seems like a very small amount of memory. But let's get, let's say well, this is four bytes right here and the value one gets assigned right there. And this kind of like points all the way down to here. Okay. So now if we were to change it with another statement that says, you know, X equals two, then what we would do basically is we would, uh, change this value right here from one to being two. And that's basically what happens. So let's go back to our code now and we'll look at that. So I can use lots of different types of numbers. So let's talk about numbers first. The number types, let's put a little comment here. Numbers include the integers and floating point numbers. And then you can even throw in Boolean values. So our int types are a short int or just short for short. Um, so I could have a uh, a, and that could be assigned some value like one. Um, I can have a, an int, which is b, and it's assign a value two. And then you have a long, a long int, or just long for short. C divided by three, and I can have a long, long int, or just long, long for short long long d equal to four so how big are each of these well a short is typically just two bytes and int is typically four bytes but that's kind of a weird one because sometimes it's tied to the processor and so we just kind of assume it's about four bytes and it's, it's thought of being as being four bytes, although historically it could change and it was a little bit messy. Longs are four bytes. So you'd say, well, why isn't it four bytes or two bytes or what is it? And well, it's just historical problems. And then the long, long or the long, long int is eight bytes. All right. So that gives you an idea of how big each one of these things are. Uh, if you ever were to play games, older games, they use a lot of shorter things like ints. And if you think about it, an int really only has two bytes of data, which means it goes to like what, you know, sometimes you could be collecting gold in some game and you hit some number like 32,000 gold and suddenly it becomes negative 32,000 gold. That was the problem with shorts. They just weren't really made for well, large numbers. Ints have a similar problem because it's only four bytes. Longs, four bytes. A long, long is much bigger. Eight bytes, much bigger. Um, IP addresses are four bytes, which means there are roughly a possibility of about four billion possible IP addresses. However, the way they designed it, they're, they're missing a bunch. That's okay. So you get an idea. It'll fit in a four byte integer or long value you also have in addition to these integer types you have floating point types and these floating point types so let's put a little right here these are integer types you have 
floating point types. And the floating point types are your float, float. So let's do E equal to 3.14. You got your double F equals to 3.14. And you've got your long double. Let's make that also equal to 3.14. All the same. Now these things are different lengths as well. So the floating point types, the rare floats, are four bytes long. The doubles are eight bytes. And the long doubles, well, they're also eight bytes. So not a huge jump. Once again, historical things. Um, so best just to use doubles and not worry about long doubles or things like that. If you want to explicitly refer to certain things, um, you can, oh, I guess I need a letter here. Explicitly refer to um, this 3.04 as a floating point type. You can put an F after it. Maybe that's better if you have like a three, three F, um, because then say, okay, maybe it's a three, 3.0 F, a little be better. Um, try to get an idea of, of making sure it's explicitly that. In addition to your integer types, you also can have ones that are not using negative numbers. So you could do an unsigned short, or you can have an unsigned int, unsigned long, or unsigned long, long. So unsigned short, so A1. So these things uh, help you out. And just like with the F extension afterwards, you can have a suffix added to numbers here. So I could have an unsigned, unsigned long, long, uh, D one equal to, uh, one, two, three, four, and do LL. And they'll tell it's a long, long, or I could just do one L for a long, or I just leave it off. Um, you can also do lower cases, but that's really a bad idea because if I put L, lowercase l's here you might say well this is like a one and these are ones and you might get confused just use capital l's if you're actually going to explicitly refer to it as a long long all right so there are your integer types and your floating point types you also have a well a boolean type it's like an integer that can only have two values just zero or one so it's a true or false statement thing and you do those with a bool bool and we call it h equals either true or false so that's all it is and these things only take up one byte in reality they really only need one bit but it's kind of hard to split things on the bit boundaries and so they take up one byte so just keep that in mind all right, so those are your number types. Now let's look at our, well, constants. Sometimes you have things like pi. Pi is 3.4, and if you were to do a double, pi equals 3.14, then you could later go through and say pi equals 5.14 and that would be perfectly valid code but we all know that pi doesn't really change i mean sure it could be 3.14 or it could be 3.141592 and you know, make it longer you could do that but what if you don't want to change it well you could say fine it is a double but it is a constant double that doesn't change so we can add the keyword const in front of it, cons pi, 
but we also have a convention where if it's a constant, we want to have the whole name in capital letters. So P I like this capital. So then if you try doing something like uh, pi equals 5.14 like that, it suddenly has this little squiggly line here and says something it's like, what's wrong? Well, you can't redefine it. And you can see at the bottom, um, it's cannot assign to variable pi with const qualified type const double. Or there you go. So that's a fixed value. When we are writing code, we have lots of different variables and we can work with these variables and we can display variables. So let's just add a couple here. So I've got an int um, a equals 10 and I can later define it as a equals 15 and change the value like that. I can also print out the value. So if I want to, I can do a C out and I'm using the namespace standard library. So I can do C out A, then end line like this. And this will print out the value of A. As we might guess, when I run this, it prints out the number 15 because A was defined as 10. And then later the value changed to be 15. And after that, it printed out number 15. So right here was 15. So that's how you can print out the values. One thing you'll see sometimes is people have things like quotes. So if I put quotes around this, C out A like that, then it suddenly changes what gets printed. So I'll go ahead and run this. And it says, a it prints out the letter A as opposed to the value A. I can also change this to double quotes and print it out again. And it prints out once again A as opposed to the number 15. So what is this thing? Well, we talked about number types, which included the integer types, the floating point types, and the Boolean types. And we talked a little bit about constants which we did right here but what we haven't talked about is the character types now all the numbers we're processing are numbers but what happens if you want to do something that's not a number well originally they thought up letters and they said well letters they're not really numbers and so we can't add and subtract the letters the same way but we can have numbers represent letters and so here we have the ascii table which i just downloaded off the internet and you can see that we have these decimal number values followed by what they actually mean so you can see the number 32 is the character the space character they have other ones too but but this one is the space character and then you can see different punctuation marks and then you have numbers so the number 42 has the zero character, the character zero, not the value zero, but the character zero, which is a little bit different. So you got to remember that the character zero and the number zero are not the same, but the character zero is 48. Then it goes all the way down to nine. Then you jump around to the A. A capital A is 65. It has a value of 65 all the way down to a capital Z, which is a value of 90. The lowercase a has a value of 97, all the way down to the, the lowercase z, which is 122. So this is the ASCII table, and it helps you figure out what things mean and what to do with them. Jumping back into my code here, we have to figure out, well, how do we use this? Well, characters, are stored as a character type, which is char. So I get a char b equals, and then I have to give it the value. And when I store characters, I use single quotes. And so I can use a single quote for letter x, for example. And then b is assigned to x. So if I print b right here. What will have happening is it will print the letter x. 
because that's the value stored inside of B. All right, let's go ahead and run this just to verify that that's what's happening. Print this out, and you can see the letter X prints out because that is the value stored inside the character B. Now, one thing you might realize is that because the character B has a value in the ASCII table, you could actually do math with the letter or the character B, and you can use the character type to store numbers that just print out as, well, characters. You can also do other things, like if you wanted to do a Caesar cipher, for example, you could shift characters. So you could do um, X plus three, which suddenly, well, we won't get to adding and subtracting things later. We'll do that, we'll do that later, but right now I just let you know that you, that can be done. Um, when you're naming variables, they all have, well, they start with characters usually. You want to start with either a letter, uppercase or lowercase, normally lowercase. And then you can have numbers after it or digits after it. So if I were to do int x equals 10, that's fine. But I can't have um, 1x being equal to 10 because it can't start with an integer. It has to start with, or it can't start with a decimal number or a digit. It has to start with a letter. It could be a capital X, or it could be a lowercase x, or it can be an underscore followed by an x, but it can't start with a digit. After you have your valid character, you can have decimal digit numbers. You can have one x10 equals 10. That's fine, except the first one has to be a letter or an underscore. Also, uh, another thing to think about is when we are storing stuff, we have different types, um, different types of characters. So we have the character X, but we also have a lot of special characters. So the special characters include things like the new line, which we get with the end L. So end L does create a new line character, but there are a bunch of other ones we have as well. So let's go ahead and look at some of those. So our characters are slash N is the new line. We have the slash R character for the carriage return. Um, you'll find that um, on Linux and uh, what is it, Unix machines, they use the new line character. But on things like Macintoshes, you use the slash R character, which is the carriage return. Windows decided to use both and say, fine, we're going to use both the slash N and the slash R at the end of lines for new lines. You also have a slash B for backspace. You have a slash A for an alert or a bell. Um, whenever you have like a beeping sound on a computer, it's typically just you print out the slash A character and it does that. Slash T is for a tab. Slash F is for a form feed. I don't know if I've ever seen that one used before, but it gets used sometimes. And then you have the slash zero. So not a slash O, slash zero, I guess. As the null character, and that also means just the, well, the ask character zero. And then because all these slash things are slashes, if you want to actually do a slash, you just do slash slash which is important for things like um, directory names, file names, where you do C colon slash slash the directory slash slash the file or something like that in order to keep track of everything. So that's how you keep track of these things and work with it. In addition to these types, we also have another type we have called enumerated types. So if I wanted to create an enumerated type I can do enum and figure out what I want to call my enum so I could call this one um, let's say color so my enum color has a bunch of colors 
So maybe do the red, green, and blue. Red, green, and blue. Green and blue. And then I can create a color variable. Color um, house color equals. And then I can do red or green or blue. Typically what ends up happening in the system is that red, green, and blue each get assigned an integer value such as 0, 1, and 2. And then you're changing it. So you could actually add one to shift to the next one in the enum values and things like that. But that's what's happening here. And so you can create these enumerated values. I hope this gives you a general idea of how variables work, just basic variables uh, in the C++ language.